First thing I would like to do, I'd like to call up Bob Devaney and hand the program over to him for a moment. We're very lucky here today to have uh, Yalesville's own Fife and Drum Corps, the Yalesville Agents. Thank you very much. So to start our program, please remove your hats and join us in the Star Spangled Banner. Attention! Shoulder fire locks! Present arms! rendition of our national anthem. We, appreciate, we certainly appreciate the Yale so Fife Fife and Drum, which has only been around here since about 1880-ish. Uh, this, I believe, is the third or fourth iteration, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but in any event, welcome. Um, some people might say, well, why, why are we doing this? Well, Yalesville, as I commented a moment ago, was really the early industrial center of Wallingford. And that goes back really to 1677 when the town corn mill, not a grist mill, it was referred to as a corn mill, was moved from Wharton Brook, which didn't have enough of a head or didn't have enough water power, if you will, moved up to the first falls here in Yalesville. It was later moved in 1684 down to the current site of what is now Westbrook Lobster. Uh, and there the town mill stayed for the next, actually, 200 years. So, early on it was known as Tyler's Mills because William Tyler was the miller who, who bought out his partner, Mr. Stanley, in about 1707, and for a hundred years it was known as Tyler's Mills. And I say Tyler's Mills because it was a lumber mill, it was a grist mill. It was a fulling mill, which means that they ran water through wool to give the wool more body. It was also a mill that went ahead and provided sifting of the flour. So basically you had four different mill components, in addition to which the Tyler women made cloth and dyed cloth. Now, yes, there was, you know, there, were, there was cottage industry in the center of Wallingford, up, up and down Main Street, but there was not the concentration that there was here in Yalesville, or what would become Yalesville in the first decade of the 1800s when Charles Yale moved his company from South Main Street in Wallingford up to where Westbrook Lobster is today. Now, without going any further, I'd like to thank Vinnie Chaboni and Christina Tata, our, you know, two of our council people, for joining us. Uh, sir, and certainly do appre appreciate that. Other than that, Yalesville. Why, why, why did we do the sign? Well, it's because of your history. But it's, it's more than just the industrial history. As you will see when, when, when this gets unveiled, it's, yes, about the commerce. It's about the church history. It's about the educational history. It's about a number of other things about Yalesville. Yalesville is a very special community. And one of the things that the Descendants Committee of Wallingford 350 plus, now plus two, uh, wanted to do was to recognize Yalesville. And the fact that it is as special as it has been for 300 plus years. Uh, wonderful place to live, and I'll be calling up a couple people who spent a bit of their childhood here, and one of them still lives here, 
uh, just to give an idea of maybe some of the things they remember, some of their thoughts on the old school. Um, so, without further ado, uh, before I get to that, if I could have the uh, Yale School Fife, Fife and Drum Corps, give us another song, please. person I would like to call up uh, is a young lady who helped me quite a bit with regard to coming up with what is on the sign. A young lady who grew up here in Yellowsville and in fact still lives here. Mary Ellen Kingsland Eccles, if you would please. Good afternoon and thank you so much for coming. Yellowsville is such a beautiful, beautiful village. I have always been so proud of it, and I really am so thrilled that the Yellowsville Fife and Drum Corps is here. And my grandfather, Frank Fritz, was a member, I still have his fife, of it many, many, many years ago. I think they came from Germany in 1880. So he came, probably not the first group, maybe the second. But Yellowsville, when Bob Devaney and Bob Beaumont talked to me about at the meeting, the descendants meeting, um, I felt very strongly about Yalesville. My dad's side of the family goes back to the original settlers, but I grew up here in Yalesville and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. When we talked about the sign, as you'll see, you know, Bob Beaumont, nobody, he's second to none with history of this town, the businesses, everything. But it was really important to me that we call it the village and that we recognize it and that we talk about the people. It's really about the people. It's the people even today that make Yalesville so special, so wonderful. So thank you so much for being here. Anything else I could say, you can read for yourself in a little bit, but thanks so much for being out here today with us. Thank you, Mary Ellen. And I might say that she was a very big help for me in getting this sign done. Corrected a few things that I'd done wrong and added a few things that needed to be added that I hadn't thought of. So I sincerely appreciate it and thank you, ma'am. Next one I'd like to call up is a gentleman some of you might know, uh, all by the name of William Dickinson. Mayor Dickinson, if you would be so kind as to step forward. Nice to join all of you. Yes, uh, Yalesville is very dear to many hearts, mine being one of them. I remember three things that uh, are just unique and, and very special to me. One was, all of us in the neighborhood, and I had a sister and two brothers and a lot of other neighborhood children, we would ride our sleds from the upper portion of 63 Hill Avenue, which is part of the hill we know as the Knoll in Yalesville, we would ride those sleds and sometimes we'd connect them all together like a big chain, train, <laughs> and ride them down through our property to Hill Avenue and then down Hill Avenue below where it, it, there's this fairly steep little hill there, almost to where Mary Ellen lives today. We had such fun. There wasn't the kind of traffic there is today. 
but it was just a wonderful occasion for kids to be able to enjoy ice and snow and ride the sleds. Secondly, my mother would go out behind the garage on the property, which is still there, and there were elderberry bushes that grew there. She would pick all the elderberries and end up making jelly and syrup, the syrup to be used on pancakes. Just very special. That elderberry syrup was out of this world. The third thing is, and you'll probably wonder why I'm mentioning this, but it's partly because of uh, the individual involved. We had a postal worker who would come to the property delivering the mail, none other than, yes, Bob the Beatty. <laughs> of course, my parents never wanted to go out and, and say hello to him. They always sent me. No, I'm just kidding. Bob did a wonderful job, represented the Postal Service very well. We always received our mail. My father was a doctor. He always wanted to get those, those uh, letters and bulletins and <laughs> whatnot. So anyway, Yalesville, a very special place, great place to grow up. Walked over to Yalesville School and back home again. It was, it, couldn't beat it. So it's nice to be here with all of you. Mayor, I thank, you, I, thank, I thank you very much. Appreciate the comments. And I just want to note uh, Councilman Ted, uh, Ted, Councilman Vinny Tessa just, just, just arrived a few minutes ago. I just want to recognize him. Now, a couple comments I would like to make after I have the Yalesville Fife and Drum Corps play again, as Bernie just reminded me of. Sir. <laughs> the sign and you know, concerning the processor, um, should make it known that it's the only bit historical society that, you know, that, that funded the sign. Uh, and I might add, we also funded the time capsule yesterday. Uh, but, uh, you know, and as I said earlier, you know, we did it because we believe in Yalesville, which is one reason that the historical society bought the Yalesville library, because we're hoping to go ahead. Thank you. We're hoping to go ahead and transition that from being the Yellsville Library to being uh, an extension of the Wallabit Historical Society, probably using it as a research center. Uh, but in addition to that, there will be a, a, a bit of Yellsville memorabilia, not the least of which was from some of the factories that were either, you know, that were along the Quinnipiac, whether it was the Yales, whether it was the Mixes, whether it was, whether it was Parker, or further up uh, in Tracy, whether it was Jennings and Griffin. Uh, as they say, celebrating the rich history. And there's a young lady who helped me with a sign who seemed quite a bit, quite interested in trying to do something to help maybe with the transition. I'm not really trying to put her on the spot because she already pretty much had you know, did volunteer for that. So I just wanted to go ahead and give credit to the, so to the Historical Society. Uh, yeah, I'm involved with that. I'm, I've been involved with that for 40 years. But in any event, uh, what I'd like to do at this point then, uh, this, as I say, this is, this is one of the last, this is the last event as part of Wallingford 350. And what I would like to do at this point, I would like to call Mary Ellen and Mayor Dickinson up, and I'd like to have them unveil the uh, the uh, sign. So if you would, I'm going to just play the fanfare. And then You're going to what? I'll just play a fanfare. 
Oh, okay, you can do it. Okay, then. Madam. Are you not going to help me? Put your fans in. We'll do it together. Well, you can, or you can help me. Okay. Okay. So, on the count of three, if you would. Okay. If you're on the uh, west side, you will see a lot with regard to the industry. If you're on the east side, you will see a lot with regard to the village. Uh, quite an interesting place. It's at least, as, you know, it, you know, it's got as much history as the main part of Wallingford. It, it's a wonderful village. Wallingford, as Wallingford, as I've said to a number of people in recent days, we may be a town of 45, 47,000 people. But Wallingford is still a community. And guess what? This is one special community within our community of Wallingford. So I uh, wanted to make sure that Yellsville's history would be remembered, which is why, which is why when Bob Devaney made the comment, you know, made the comment to me one time, you know, we ought to do something for Yellsville. I said, well, you know, we can put up a historic sign, and that's when it started, and then we managed to draw Mary Ellen into it. But that that really is what the genesis of what it was, was a comment that, you know, that Bob had made. Now, um, I built one more thing I'd like to do, which I, I would like to call the mayor up, and I would like to call Bob Devaney and Christina Mansfield up. And, Mayor, you would go ahead and close on that. So this, this means that we bring to a close our 350th celebration. We thank obviously the committee standing now with the two chairs behind me and all of those involved with the 350th celebration. Tremendous amount of work over what? Five? Seven years? Seven years, partly because of delays due to COVID and a few other things, but uh, really a wonderful celebration. I think everyone has have been, everyone can enjoy themselves and Rest assured that Wallingford is in good hands. I want to thank uh, Government TV for being here, the Wallingford Police Department for all of their activities over the celebratory times, Public Works, which does a lot of the installation services and, and uh, make sure that these signs will be standing a long time. So with those words, we'll say, well, three cheers, right? for 350th and another 350 for Wallingford. Ready? Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! All right. Hooray! Mayor, I thank, I thank you very much. Um, so I will just about, I'm just about ready to adjourn. Bernie, I'll be right with you. <laughs> all right, seriously. Um, Thank, again, thank you all for coming. And I particularly want to thank the Department of Public Works for what they did here. It was a joy watching the men work together, putting the sign up, digging, digging out what they had to do, or boring out what they had to for the post, working together to put it up, cleaning up around the stone that's behind you that commemorates the Yellsville men who fought in World War I, and putting in the plantings. Park looks the best it's looked in you know in many years, in my opinion. That's not a knock on what it has been before. They did a tremendous job, and I just want that noted on the record. So, in any event, uh, I will turn this over to the Ellsville Fife and Drum Corps for one for one more song. <laughs>